Hey, Ryan here with FBF, Florida Boy Finance. Christmas is coming. It's one of my favorite times of the year. I love the food, the decorations, the lights on the houses, the Christmas movies, the Christmas music, and the gift giving. It's also magical. We give gifts to people to show how much we care for them. It's a wonderful exercise in loving people and showing people how much we care. That's why the motto of this channel is to live below your means, save outrageously, and give generously. Giving generously is a key component of this channel, but all the gift giving around the holidays can have a dark side. Yeah, that was a little over the top. You see, some people and their desire to give nice gifts to people they love will spend more than they can afford and rack up some major credit card debt. In fact, one article I found states that this year, 59% of people polled said that they plan to carry the gift giving debt for at least six months. On one hand, wanting to give generously to others is a wonderful thing. But on the other hand, going into debt for it is not a smart financial move. Today, I'm going to give you several ways to avoid going into debt giving gifts during this season, but also encourage you to be a generous giver as well. Before we get going, please give me a gift for Christmas by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It's free and easy and would be a great Christmas present for me and great for the channel. The vast majority of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. Why not? It's free and it's easy. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you can be notified every time a new video posts. Go ahead and follow the links in the description below to follow me on Instagram, Florida Boy Finance, and like my Facebook page, also called Florida Boy Finance, for behind the scenes photos, articles, and sneak peeks at my newest videos. And in the final countdown to Christmas, many people are facing a time of worry and anxiety over how they're going to pay for it all. New research by the consumer group Which, given exclusively to Channel 4 News, has revealed the financial difficulties of those struggling to get by. 11% of Britons are still paying off money they borrowed for last year's Christmas spending. 93% feel that they are under pressure to spend too much at this time of year. And a Circle Housing survey shows around 15% of British adults plan to take out a loan over the festive period. In order to avoid debt related to excessive spending on gifts, many people will say to not put anything on a credit card. I don't really agree with that. There are far too many great benefits to using credit cards. Stuff like cash back and free travel. My initial thoughts are to put those gifts on a credit card, but to pay it off at the end of the month. Now, don't get me wrong, I do understand that there are some people who have trouble controlling their spending. For those, they should pay only cash for Christmas gifts. So let's get going and find out the best ways to avoid excessive debt during this magical Christmas season. Let's start with those of you that struggle with putting too much on credit cards and overspending. If that applies to you, only pay cash. Don't put the gifts on the credit card. That can make your gifts cost more than double what you have paid had you paid cash. Let me illustrate it this way. Let's assume you decide to pay $1,500 for your gifts. You put everything on your credit card so you can pay it off over time and don't have to pay it all at once. If you only pay the minimum payment each month, it will take you 153 months or almost 13 years to pay off that debt and will cost you $1,673.11 in interest alone. That is over double what you would have paid had you just paid cash for those presents. If you decide to pay it off in six months, like the people surveyed said, it will cost you $300 per month and cost you $71.30 in interest over those six months. To put it in perspective, if you make $25 an hour, that means you'll have to work almost three hours just to pay the interest on your credit card purchases from the gifts you purchased during Christmas. There is definitely a better way to do this, by either paying cash or paying off that credit card each month. You see, no matter how financially savvy you think you are, everyone should make a budget for gift spending and stick to it. I would even go as far to say to make a list of all the family members 
and friends that you are going to buy gifts for. Something kind of like this. First, you want to determine a total amount you are willing to spend. I'll say $1,000 in this example to make the math easy. Then you want to make a list of everyone you're going to buy gifts for. 15 people in this example. Then assign a dollar amount for each person. Obviously, there are some people you'll want to spend more on and some people you might spend less on. That is one easy way to not overspend. Once you make a list, stick to that list. Only spend on each person once you have predetermined to spend. If you have the cash in your bank account, put the purchases on your credit card and pay it off at the end of the month. The reasons for doing that are twofold. The first reason being fraud protection on a credit card is very good. There is so much fraud around this time of year and using a credit card will help guard against any potential fraud. The second reason is the cash back or travel rewards that you will get from purchasing the gifts on your credit card. At 2% cash back on $1,000, that gives you $20 in cash back from buying Christmas presents. That means you almost get one of those presents for free. Now that I've mentioned the major ways to avoid overspending on gifts during this holiday season, here are some practical tips and advice to save some extra money along the way. Number one, for those with good credit, open a credit card with 0% interest. This is a great opportunity to pay off your gifts over three to six months and not pay any interest on those purchases. But remember, usually these credit card offers only have a limited time for interest-free purchases, usually only about six to 12 months. So be sure to pay it off before the interest-free period is up. A lot of these credit cards also offer a cash back amount if you spend a certain amount of money over a certain amount of time. For example, here is a current offer as of November of 2021 for a Chase Freedom Unlimited card. It offers a $200 bonus in cash if you spend $500 in the first three months and also offers a 0% APR for 15 months. This would be a great offer to consider. No annual fee, $200 in cash back on money you are going to spend anyway, and 0% APR for 15 months. The $200 in cash back will cover 20% of the gifts you purchase if you spend $1,000. That's a huge savings. As a disclaimer, I have no interest or affiliation or get no money from Chase for showing you that credit card. I just thought it was a great example of something that you could use during this holiday season to save you some money. The second practical tip would be to put all your purchases on one card. This is a good way to protect against fraud, but also to track what you are spending. Putting presents on several different cards can easily cause you to forget what you have spent. Practical tip number three is to make a shopping plan. Research sale ads and find what you want to get a specific person at a specific place and plan to go to that place to get it. With a shopping plan, you avoid aimlessly shopping, getting frustrated, then spending more than you would have planned on someone just to get that shopping trip done. Avoid all this by setting your budget, finding that item, and making a plan to go get it. It's not just best for your time, but best for your budget as well. The fourth practical tip is to shop alone. <laughs> I know I know this sounds crazy for some, but shopping with certain people can cause you to spend way more than you wanted to. We all have that one friend who just loves to window shop and spend other people's money. They will encourage you to spend more money to buy something you don't need that happens to be on sale. Avoid that temptation by shopping alone, or at least by not shopping with that one friend. The fifth and final practical tip is to avoid upselling. All the companies do it these days. For example, they'll put, we'll say, a 42-inch 4K TV on sale for 450 bucks, then place a 60-inch 4K TV right next to it for 550 bucks. You see them both together and think, I could spend 100 bucks more and get a much bigger TV. Don't fall for it. This is just a way to try and get more sales from their customers. Avoid this by going in and buying what you had already planned to buy. Avoid any last-second changes to your list unless those changes save you money. This time of year is such a happy time. People will be seeing family, having meals together, and exchanging gifts with family and friends. But don't let this time of year cause a strain on your finances and cause you unneeded debt for the next six months or longer. Follow these tips to continue being a generous giver, but also to show financial restraint to not put a huge stress on your financial situation by being generous to others. If you're still watching this video, that means you liked it. So do me a favor and smash that like button below and subscribe to the channel. I need more subscribers to continue to grow. 
So take three seconds to help me out. I'd really appreciate it. And like I said earlier, it'd be a great Christmas present for me. Also, follow the links in the description below to follow me on Instagram, Florida Boy Finance, and like my Facebook page, also called Florida Boy Finance, for behind the scenes photos, articles, and sneak peeks at my newest videos. Until next time, as always, remember to live below your means, save outrageously, and give generously.